In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to oil fill a watch such as this, a Swiss quartz watch, the Mathy Tussaud Vintage is what I'll be using. Hey, I'm Chase, and this is All Things Random. This is not the normal intro to the videos that you're used to because I wanted to hop right into the build itself. Now you get an idea of what this watch is going to look like prior to filling it with oil. Look at the distortion on the glass. Look at the dial face itself because all that is about to change. Now, again, what are we doing? We are filling this with 100% silicone oil. I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, there's a few things that you need for this build. You need a small container. I'll show you that. You need the oil itself. We'll go over that and you need to disassemble the watch. Now for me, I have a tool kit that has everything that you need to disassemble and work on watches. So the first thing that we're going to do is pull off the straps itself because everything to include the movement and the crown, the crown stem all needs to come out of this watch because when you reassemble it, it's going to be in the oil itself it's going to be submerged while you assemble it so the first thing i did was take off the spring bars with a spring bar tool that came in the kit itself this is extremely easy you can also use a small screwdriver now the next thing you need to do is toss on some latex gloves or something similar this is about to get really messy imagine dealing with olive oil the entire time so you want to wear gloves now next you want to take off the case back i use a case back opener right here you can see it came with a kit that I got for Christmas. It worked quite well. Make sure that you don't ruin any gaskets that may be inside the watch because you're sealing oil inside the watch. You don't want it to leak anywhere. Now next you want to take out the crown and the crown stem. With coarse watches it's extremely easy. There's just a small button you press. You take out the movement holder. In this case it was plastic. And then take out the entire movement and dial itself. Keep it all together. Now this is what I used. I used a type 200 silicone oil that was 100% silicone with a viscosity of 50. This makes it so it's not too thick and it's not too thin as well. Now this right here is a small container that I took off and cut from a laundry detergent lid it seemed to work quite well now you want to put the watch case bare inside make sure it's free of any type of dust and you want to fill it with silicone oil and you also want to fill the container with silicone oil now next you want to put the movement and the dial in and you want to do it at sort of an angle don't drop it just directly in put it in at an angle and then sort of move it around with some tweezers or your fingers and then fill the entire case up with oil now continue to tap it and move it around a little bit. It'll get any leftover bubbles inside out. And then fill the rest of the container with silicone oil so the entire thing is submerged. Next, you want to put the crown and the crown stem in the watch submerged under the water itself. Now this entire thing, the rest of the process is going to be done underneath the oil. It will not come out, so make sure that you fill it up enough that the entire watch is submerged. Now, after everything is said and done, you want to put the movement holder in. Now, this plastic movement holder, it seemed to have an issue getting back in the watch, but came out quite easily after I was able to get it clicked in. Next, it was time to put the gasket and the case back on. Now, the gasket itself is not hard to put on. There's a small little sort of ledge or indentation in the case back to put it on. However, it didn't seem to want to sit there. It seemed to want to kind of float. So after that's on, next is the case back itself. If you look at this case back, this case back is sort of like indented. It sort of has this um, concave feature on the inside. Now this concerned me because I was afraid there would be some sort of bubble left inside that eventually would make its way to the face of the watch which would look ugly as hell. That's not what I wanted. So what I did was I used a syringe there. It's sort of a injector for baking that I got from the baking section and I filled that with silicone oil and then as I was putting the case back on I injected more silicone oil into the watch as if I was doing Botox and then closed it and then sealed it up. Now after this I used the screwdriver and sort of slowly rotated the case back on hoping that there would be no air bubbles. I was lucky enough during this process I only had to do it once. I was extremely surprised though just how well it turned out. Now after the case back is on and you feel comfortable enough pulling it out like it's closed enough to pull it out you can go and pull it out and then Finish screwing it down with your case back holder and you want to do it pretty tight. Don't overly tighten this stuff because it will ruin the gaskets but you want it pretty snug. 
Now, once you feel like you've tightened it enough and it's all completely sealed up, you're done. And it's time to clean off the outside. Now, I, again, was unsure. I kept retightening and tightening and tightening. I may have over-tightened it, but I really do not want this to leak. It's the first time I've done this. I was a little nervous doing it, but here is the first shot of it after it's oil-filled. Now, you can see that the dial itself is sort of pushed. The image of it is pushed to the outside of the crystal, so there's no distortion at all. Now, I'm going to finish cleaning this thing and put the watch straps back on and then get a closer view of the watch itself. We'll get some close-up shots so you can see just how cool it is. It looks so awesome. It's actually turned out far better than I thought. Now, the dome, the extreme dome crystal that I used, I used it for a reason. You can use something with flat crystal, but I felt like it wasn't going to be as distorted as it was like it almost looks from the side like it's an lcd screen like it's a digital lcd screen not that it's a standard analog watch this project was far easier than i thought when i built my automatic watch that was much more difficult than oil filling this quartz watch and it turned out far better than I could have ever imagined. I literally sat and I stared at this thing, observing it from all angles for about 30 minutes because I was just amazed how something so simple like oil filling the watch can have such a dramatic change. Now, there was no issue with the movement itself. I timed it for about six hours and there was no change in the accuracy. So the viscosity of the 50 seemed just about right. And it had zero issue lining up on the minute markers like it had before. And I'll be honest, from the front, from directly straight on, it looks normal. And then you look at it from the side and it just looks Awesome. I'm going to show you some more shots here, but let's wrap up the video. Now, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see next. Now, if you like videos like this, if you like build videos like this, remember, I got plenty more in the future. Again, if you leave comments down below, my buddy is the one who told me I should try this, and here I am doing it. So if you have any ideas like that, just leave them in the comments below. Give the video a like. Hit that notification bell. i got a lot of watch videos coming up in the future. I would do a follow-up video on this watch in about six months to see what the long term is. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified when I drop the next video. Until next time, guys.